Hello and welcome to the latest Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce Q&A and I'm delighted today to be joined at SCC who of course are one of our uh, esteemed Chamber patrons. Kat, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, good afternoon. No, good, to, uh, good to have you here. So I suppose you know, the first question really, um, I mean, what's been the impact of, of COVID-19 on cyber security? It's always been a it's been a hot topic in recent years anyway but but how has this situation changed things so i think covid has fundamentally changed the way that businesses operate they've been you know forced to really focus on their digital transformation journey which can be quite an alien concept to a lot of organizations and where organizations may have had a digital transformation journey planned out over the next sort of 12 to 18 months they've been forced to adopt that very quickly and unfortunately as a result of that the risk of cyber security threats increases because the landscape and the, the attack surface where cyber security threats can come into play is dramatically increased. Um, obviously, bef before COVID, um, there was a, a sort of reactive and proactive approach to security, um, which was fundamentally important to a lot of our, our customers and organisations across the UK and the globe. Um, but really, as COVID hit and sort of the, the working from home policies came into place, they had to really... It, reactively um, ensure that they were prioritizing where the biggest threats had come in from. And that resulted in a lot of remote secure, uh, secure remote access working from home. It also resulted in them uh, also adopting a lot of identity security solutions to ensure that their users could have secure access, but also that the company data was protected now that that was being accessed, accessed from their employees' homes. Another area as well was around endpoint security, so laptops, mobile devices. Where users would currently have used these in a secure working environment, they're now working these at home. The initial sort of perimeter security, such as firewalling, wasn't actually in place. So we had to remove that first layer of, of protection and defense against cyber attacks coming in on those endpoints. So that's been a really critical process for those organizations not only to, to source the additional laptops they need to get all of their workers remote, remote working but also how to secure them effectively so that they can reduce the risk of cyber attacks coming across their organization. And Kat, I mean, I mean how quickly do you know those who are trying to, to breach security how quickly do they adapt to the these changes and, and almost sort of feel somewhat naive asking that is it like you know, people see the opportunity and boom, they're, they're straight in. And so it's, um, uh, it's almost instantaneous. And, you know, there's, there's a lockdown uh, um, happening, happening across the globe, didn't it? But was the, 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 people were taking advantage of this straight away, I see. Unfortunately, yes. The, the cyber criminals have taken full advantage in their exploit in this pandemic. Um, we've seen an unprecedented increase in fish targeted phishing attacks. And unfortunately, these phishing attacks are becoming more and more sophisticated. So they're looking for user credentials. It's the easiest way for them to infiltrate an organization if they can get hold of those. In March alone, we saw around 800 records um, exploited. Unfortunately, 800 million records exploited across the globe, which is a significant increase in that month alone. And it's really to do with the hackers understanding that the focus of the employees as a result of working from home is not necessarily the same as it would be on their day-to-day -day work if they were in office. They could potentially be homeschooling, they could potentially yeah. be you know, nervous about the pandemic. So their focus on actually identifying what a malicious email may look like is compromised. And the cyber criminals are taking full effect of that. Um, and it's, it's a big concern for a lot of organizations. It's about how they educate their staff throughout differing levels of IT literacy to really understand what those malicious emails look like. But yes, they've taken taken full advantage, unfortunately. And so, I mean, how how have you sort of responded and, and reacted for these new situations or for the, the current situation? What what has SCC been doing, and and what have you been advising you know your your customers and other businesses? Yeah, absolutely. So SCC's been working and supporting customers across different verticals for for many years, not just across obviously cybersecurity, but other areas of IT as well. And for us, it's very key, not just through this process, but to continually um, educate ourselves and be aware of the evolving threat landscape. You know, unfortunately, the, the hackers are always one, two, three steps ahead of us. Um, so we have to maintain, you know, relevant understanding and market awareness of, of what's happening. And 
through our Stronger Together campaign, we've been supporting a lot of customers um, across different verticals. And NHS Trust, for example, they had to immediately um, allow 600 of their um, key NHS staff to work from home. Um, so within five days, SDC was able to deploy a new firewall solution to allow that first layer of security, that perimeter defense from home working, which in effect enabled, you know, critical cancer operations for cancer patients to be able to go ahead. So SCC you know, has been fundamentally supporting their clients through that. Um, you know, we've been supporting organizations as well from a proactive nature. So really identifying where those threats could be coming from as a result of utilizing um, advanced user behavior analytics to identify changes in user behavior, but also um, anomalies on their network. So we can be better yeah. prepared that if unfortunately incident were to come into play, then we'd know how to react to that. So have you had to introduce new products and services or, or is it the situation that this is a lot of this is um, uh, things that you already uh, had in the locker, as it were. But as you sort of talked about the speed of, uh, of rollout, it, it's um, and people having to push things uh, quicker. That's just really what's come through. It, it is. It's it's a mix. It's a mixture, if I'm honest. So a lot of these um, areas of security, we've been supporting our customers. We've been supporting customers through prior to COVID. Um, obviously, COVID has resulted in budgets being cut from organisations. So their priorities of where they need to spend have changed, and their ability to spend has changed as well. So through the wider Rigby Group and through Rigby Financing, we're able to support our customers through more of an opex expenditure model rather than you know investing in that upfront um, capex expenditure but also it's really about ensuring that our customers understand where their risk profile currently sits so as well as the traditional tooling and professional services it's more around a thought leadership approach of are their current tools processes and people effective in securing them against this heightened risk but also effective in adapting to the new way of home working so the likes of security assessments and threat assessments a key to that because a lot of you know lack of resource to the result of people being furloughed and unfortunately being made redundant could actually reduce the effectiveness of prior security tools and processes that were in place so it's making them understand how they need to adjust that and how they need to adapt it to be secure moving forward so you've got to be more wary than ever haven't you i mean a lot of certainly the first few weeks of lockdown you know we had so many conversations where where businesses were almost um just pleased or relieved at how uh, uh easily they were able to you know adapt to working from home and people using all uh -huh. sorts of devices but as you say um it's not a normal environment and actually while you may be you know sort of chuffed that you've discovered zoom and been able to still connect if you take your the ball in terms of security then you're, you're more vulnerable than ever isn't it Absolutely, absolutely. And I think you know, security underpins everything that an organization does. An organization's crown jewels are its data. Like I said before, it doesn't, we don't necessarily have that first layer of defense anymore. So it's more critical than ever to ensure that people are focused on how they can best secure their organization. At the, at the moment, EasyJet, obviously, prime example in the media, unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. their potential reputational damage as the result of a security threat in this economic climate is not a great place to be and what we're doing is supporting our customers to minimize that impact through either consolidating their existing security tool set to make better use of their current investment or to prioritize where they need to spend and where they need to focus their energy to ensure that they can be as secure as possible because unfortunately it is a very real threat and it has been before covid and it will be after covid it's just heightened at the moment due to the drastic change of how we're how we're working And I know that you've been out sort of uh, doing a recent survey as well, haven't you? Sort of speaking to businesses and, and getting their sort of uh, take on things. I mean, what, what, would, what information did you find out from that? So that's been a really interesting survey for me. And um, we've conducted it across a number of the, the CISOs um, of a lot of the organisations from different verticals that are SEC customers. It not only allows SEC to remain, you know, current with what their customers are asking for, so we can be best placed to work in partnership with them across security, but also allows us to understand different threats that are coming through different verticals so that we can support our customers that sit in the same area. So what we found uh, most recently is that um, as a result of COVID, 44% of organizations identify security and awareness training to be their biggest 
challenge at the moment, and that relates back to the phishing. You know, how do they educate people to understand what a malicious email looks like? Another area that we've been is quite interesting is where companies before COVID were adopting sort of in-house security solutions being run by their own people. We've definitely seen a dramatic shift to more cloud-based security solutions, but also the outsourcing of security. And I think that's to do with obviously lack of people, but also just lack of time and understanding of how that organization can adapt to the evolving threat landscape. So there is also- um, and Is that something which, you know, well, as I said, does that, does that enhance your risk or is it just a different way of, of, of managing your, 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 your security if you go into a cloud-based solution? So it, it can enhance your risk of security because again, that attack surface is, is dramatically increased, but there are obviously the right tools out there to enable you to ensure that you are securing against, against that cloud infrastructure. Um, we, we're seeing an awful lot of organizations move towards a cloud fair strategy. So it's just about how we adapt that security process and the tools and the procedures in order to ensure that that cloud environment is as secure as possible. And, and Kat, I mean, SEC is a global company, yeah. uh, although we always like to say, you know, it's heart firmly in Birmingham. But are you seeing, uh, you know, sort of differences uh, in different countries as to how sort of businesses are responding or their, their speed of or levels of awareness? Or is it sort of pretty much similar uh, in all of the, the different territories that, that, that you operate in? It's, it's pretty much similar across all the, all, the, all the territories that we operate. Obviously, the, the cyber criminals tend to be global organizations as well. Um, and they are definitely releasing the same level of, sort of sophisticated attack, attack across different geographies. So we do seem see that it's similar across all the different areas um, that we work and support organizations. Where you might see a slight difference is the type of industry. So if you've obviously got you know, a financial services organization, data is critical, legal firms as well, you know, compared to other organizations that necessarily their data isn't as attractive to the cyber criminals due to the value of it potentially on, on the dark web. And I mean, if, you, if you're a business watching this and maybe, you know, you uh, say there's, you know, you're being bombarded right now with different sort of challenges. And um, mm -hmm. if, if you haven't been paying attention to your, your cyber security or, you know, things have seemed fine or you've been uh, somewhat fortunate i mean what, what simple advice or would you would you offer up or what would you say some key next steps that that all businesses should be taking if they aren't already yeah so i think obviously we need to remain sympathetic to the challenges that businesses are having at the moment we understand obviously budgets are, are tight at the moment as a result of the the economic impact that COVID was bringing to them but i would say a few key areas are around the user awareness and education training to prevent. That's the easiest way for cyber criminals to get into an organization at the moment. I think the other area as well is around incident response. So if unfortunately you were to be, um, uh, if you were to be victim of a cyber attack, then um, obviously you need to have the right procedures and, and process in place to be able to effectively uh, remediate against that. Things such as obviously letting the ICO know, ensuring that um, damage to the organization is kept to a minimum. So really it's about ensuring that that instant process that may have included a lot of people that now are on furlough, may have included accessing systems that you could only do through your secure you know, office location, are adapted to be able to effectively respond to those, those cyber attacks. Another area to look out for is unfortunately the rise of the insider threat. So where mm -hmm. organizations are furloughing staff, they're having to make redundancies, we are starting to see and expecting an increase in uh, malicious activity and the risk of data threat, theft from your employees as well. So that's another real area to, area to focus on um, at the moment. And I think as well, just trying to be proactive, understanding where your current gaps are, understanding where your cyber maturity is now, how you've handled the, the cycle through obviously the COVID, but also looking to the future as well and understanding whether adaptations may need to take play, be it regarding to people, process, technology, um, to ensure that you remain as secure as possible. There's a, yeah, there's a lot you can do pretty quickly and certainly that, that, that awareness and just I taking those The other, uh, the other thing for me is I mean, security is very complex. I think there's, you need to, you need to just take the ego away during a, a crisis like this. You need to 
talk to your peers, talk to your trusted advisors, your partners, your vendors, get education where they've made mistakes, where they've had successes to ensure that you can adapt to that ever evolving threat landscape. It's all about communication and being, you know, being in partnership with the, all the organizations that potentially be affected by, by all of the risks out there. And, and, as, and I assume, obviously, if, if people want to reach out, then, then SCC have, have products and services there to, Absolutely. to help. Absolutely. I mean, SCC here and now, um, is very much works towards a partnership led approach with cyber and the rest of the, the services that SCC provide. And through you know, people, technology, and process, we've got security managed services, um, tooling, and, and professional services as well to really support organizations, not just from an information security, but also a cyber security perspective. So, taking them through that cyber security life cycle. Um, and really understanding how best they can they can make use of their current investments um, to make sure that they are adapting and evolving to be as secure as possible as, as time moves on. Yeah, and what we'll make sure is that for you know those who are watching, we'll include uh, uh, details of how you can reach out and uh, and get a hold of yourself and your team uh, around the uh, this video. So, um, well, Kat, yeah. thank you very much for for joining us. I mean, is there any sort of final you know key message to to sum up that you'd like to leave us with? I just think, you know, make sure your, your employees stay vigilant, make sure you're aware, like I said, you know, contact people that are, that are renowned in the, in the marketplace, talk to those trusted advisors, and really don't let investment on security slip. Um, it's one of those areas that we find customers, when they're prioritizing their budgets, they tend to sort of shy away because it can be viewed very much as a, an insurance policy. But as we've seen across the media and across a lot of our customers, unfortunately, the, the cyber criminals are there, that they're, they're exploiting what's going on, the pandemic at the moment, um, to just really ensure that you've got the right security tools in place to protect your organization, minimize risk, and, just, and ensure you're successful moving forward. Yeah, absolutely critical. So there's enough challenges out there. You've got to make sure you're, you're good and secure right now so you're not uh, you know, allowing these, these cyber criminals to, to add to the, the, the problems and the challenges. Kat, thank you so much for, for joining us and much. for uh, th those insights. Um, and uh, we'll appreciate and look forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks ever so much. Take care.